What's going on everyone, Updog here, and today I got a special video for you about Battle World. Uh, we finally get to talk about our playtest experience. We've had two playtests. We've also had a phone call with the devs to kind of give our feedback in between the first and the second playtest. And they did listen. Um, we'll talk about that all in the video, but I do have some special guests with me, Bendable Straws and Desir. So, um, basically... You'll see the same intro portion to on each of our channels, but then we go into an in-depth topic as well. So keep an eye out for those videos. I'm going to post those down in the description and enjoy. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those down in the comments. Um, I will try to answer them if I can and enjoy the video. What's going on YouTube? Benable Straw is back with another Envoy exclusive video for you guys. And today we have Updog and Desir joining us to talk about our battle world experiences, what they thought about the call that we had with a guy named Sean, and our second battle world experience that we had on a second playtest after they made some changes. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Initially with Battle World, the first playtest was something that was absolutely incredible. It was it was something we've never seen before, like you guys can see here. Some of the UI that we were seeing was something that was absolutely different. It was it was just something that we've never seen before. So it was it was welcomed very well. In the initial play test, we actually were able to use Pegasus instead of this Astral that you guys see. And it was it was really nice. The the initial play test was really cool, but it also had a lot of flaws. Some of the flaws that we noticed were that sometimes when we battle the animations would just go on forever. Like the animations would just drone and drone and drone. There were some, there were some characters like <laughs> this guy named Morbius, man, I'm telling you, he felt like a boss. He would spawn with like six safeguards, six evades, and your timer just went down in the dumps and you were never able to clear the mission. That was some feedback we gave immediately to the developers on the first play test. And as the siege days went on, we actually got to see some improvements go by. So I think we did siege day one, siege day two, then siege day three went about, and then that's when they started to take a little bit of our feedback once we started clearing some zones and things started to get harder. Uh, some of the developers were saying, well, as the spec ops missions go, we wanna see if you're able to clear it without the spec ops missions giving you the bonus VP. So we tried it there. To be very clear with you guys, we all tried it at level 75 blue ISO one with no T4s. We did a base difficulty of the initial test and that's what we tested with. There were a little bit of discrepancies with some accounts that didn't get uh, brought up and some of them were level 100, but they still contributed the same amount of points as, as they would with a level 75 account. As the siege days went on, uh, Lori, one of the, uh, one of the um, members on the Envoy uh, experience for us now on the, on the Envoy server, of course, she said, we're adding a feature to where the timer is actually going to stop when it is your turn. Like, if the enemies are taking a whole bunch of animations and everything, the timer stops. And we also get an additional minute on that timer. So now we're fighting with six minutes instead of only fighting with five. But as you guys play, you guys are gonna notice that the timer is way better than it would be if it was just counting down. That was just the first initial play test. And when we reached the boss note of no, it was an absolute breath of fresh air. You guys are definitely gonna want to reach the final boss. You're gonna want to be with your alliances and you're gonna want to clear every zone. No alliance likes to be left behind, especially an event like this. So you definitely want to get your alliance in line. I cannot stress that enough that your alliances need to be in line when it comes to clearing all of these difficulties. Now. I'm not necessarily sure if everybody starts off on the base difficulty, but you guys can move up the difficulties as you progress within the zones. 
So about the call, I actually was not able to attend the call, but I, I haven't even watched it personally. But uh, Updog and Desir were able to uh, attend the call and they can give you your thoughts here in a little bit. The second play test that we were able to get, we mentioned some changes like, oh, we need to get rid of, say, um, we need to get rid of one of those missions because it's just, some of them are almost impossible. So they ended up changing the second ones. One of the missions was uh it was one of those morbius missions right it was just an impossible mission to complete so they changed it with something called a herald mission that updog is actually going to be covering later in the video and the second playtest went great until we reached the <laughs> siege day five where we couldn't complete anymore and i guess they didn't want us to continue on forth but we were testing with our original accounts that we're playing with in Marvel Strike Force. And it was definitely a breath of fresh air. I definitely felt that a level 75 alliance would not fare well in a difficulty four, or, you know, they would definitely have some issues there. Because when you load into a battle, you can retreat and then you can keep your team, but it will eat up one of your three attacks. So you have to plan very 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 carefully we can't necessarily give uh, an honest feedback on the battle store the battle world store because it wasn't available the rewards changed we don't necessarily know what the rewards are going to be but it does seem like uh you guys are gonna probably gonna be getting null shards from the rewards so i'm not necessarily sure what they're gonna do of course everything is subject to change so with that being said the second playtest experience was really good. It left me in a, in a good headspace. It left me knowing that, sure, there was a little bit of intricacies that needed to get completed, but overall, it's going to be an, an, an amazing test, and they're actually going to be letting us test it a third time with the Astral team. So you guys definitely want to check out these Envoy videos. Initially... Uh, this year, what what were your uh, experiences with the initial playtest, the uh, the envoy call, and your second your second playtest experience? Yeah, so the initial playtest, um, logging into it, I was super excited. The UI I thought was really good. We wanted to try to see how the UI would be, basically try to figure things out without them telling us. So being able to kind of go into the zone, kind of see who gets the buffs and who doesn't get the buffs. Um, the Each node definitely has, like, use Annihilators, use Extreme X-Men, for instance. So during the blogs that they've been sending out where it's build these teams, it's basically for those tags, usually, is going to be the case for that. Now, certain teams, like, they had Alpha Flight on there, how they're a mixed team, that's probably going to be use Alpha Flight here. Um, there were some bugs we definitely ran into to where you kind of got it kept in a loop, but that's gonna get fixed. That's just the usual bug type of thing. The playthrough felt very easy, even at the level 75 mark that we were playing at. And some of the characters uh, didn't have the full ISOs, like if it was Hivemind, Venom wouldn't have his blue ISO, but you were able to get through it pretty easily. Um, they were definitely uh, taking the feedback that we were giving them because we had a lot of feedback to where the Morbius that you mentioned. <laughs> and I think that's one of the ways we kind of got into, hey, let's have a another like mini boss node to try to yeah. change it up a little bit. Um, when we got to the, the phone call uh, with Sean, everybody was definitely honest about the takes that we had regarding it, saying... Um, try to make these types of changes that we're going to be discussing later on in the, the video. And honestly, I did maybe about two or three days leading up to Null because we had a lot of things in the game, like a lot of screen time. Mm. Um, I believe one of oh, the yeah. towers came out at that time, correct? Yeah, that, that was the that, that was the out. kiln. <laughs> the kiln yeah, that was out yeah, at the time. Yeah, so like Monday, I had Kiln, I had Cosmic Crucible, I had War, I had Battle World, and it just got way too much for me, so I missed that day. 
and they were welcome to that feedback as well to where we're saying there was way too much feedback and for how easy the nodes were we basically logged in hit auto and set our phone down for six minutes five minutes whatever it was yeah um so that part definitely was lacking for me like the first few nodes i was very excited and then how easy it was until we got to the morbius node <laughs> um, <laughs> a dang morbius the, the the null fight though was by far the best experience of it that felt like a real world boss that we've been looking for in the game um it's just trying to lead up to it felt like it was a lot of chores like okay clean your room now do your dishes yeah. eat your vegetables <laughs> <laughs> now you get your dessert. He was no. That's kind of what it felt like for me. Um, the second play test with the changes they made still felt good, but I feel they need to make more changes personally. Um, the difficulty that we tested on, I think it was the difficulty five, or yeah, I think it was the difficulty five that we did, right? Where it was level 100, seven red required type of thing. I believe it was the difficulty four because the the yeah. devs didn't want us to okay. do a difficulty five because they were afraid that we were gonna it was gonna be too hard and we wouldn't get a good experience. Right. Right. Yep. In that one, we use our actual roster, and it was more of the same: log in, hit auto. So, like for where my roster's at, it's definitely too easy still. I really want them to amp up the difficulty so it's not like another raid where we don't have a sim button. Mm. Um, so I really hope they are open to ramping up the difficulty, making more changes, because they've definitely done it the first time. They were listening to our feedback on the phone call, and they even understood. It's like, okay, well, that explains why the participation went down as the days went on. Because yeah. it was too easy, and we had mm -hmm. another screen time. So I'm hoping there's more changes, but so far, I'm... I'm optimistic and hoping that everything does get to where it needs to be. Yeah, things definitely need to get better before they get worse. I definitely agree. I want the difficulty to be like this this flash challenge that we just got with these new enemies that is just absolutely impossible to beat with these characters that we got. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Some of the feedback that we were giving was like, um, Let's try and add scourges. Let's add unique, uh, cosm like uniqueness to the fights. And I think that's kind of how they got into the zombie and vampire thing. Maybe they took from that and moved over here. I'm not sure, but if those type of mechanics get put into Battle World cool, in like certain nodes, that would be Chef's kiss right there. That would be incredible. Up dog. What was what was your experience with uh, with the first playtest, the call you had with Sean, with the developers, of course, and your second playtest experience? Yeah, so pretty similar to you guys. Um, I like to see her said I wanted to go in there basically blind. I just wanted to play around with it and see what see what would happen. I tried teams that like didn't get the bonuses for each node you know oh, like there was that's a, good yeah. there was one that was like i don't know there was one that they rec or they had bonuses for sinister six but you could use like hero spider verse or something. maybe it's like yeah a yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that so anyway i went the opposite direction just to see how hard it was because um our rosters were all set at level 75 and gear 14 um, so I wanted to see how hard it was, <laughs> yeah. and it really wasn't that bad. Um, but um, then the then the spec ops, you know, I, I kind of knew from what they kind of talked about before uh, we had the play test, and I thought I could just fill all those rows in with all these characters no, that I didn't need. And no, you no, can only, you can only use ten characters. Yes. So, <laughs> um, so that was uh, that was uh, a learning experience, and they do have a lot of information that you can easily miss on there there's a lot of uh like uh instructions and how things work so be looking for that information button that little i button yeah that'll tell you everything you need to know bendy over here literally <laughs> everything you need to know in that little i yep. button yep 
So Bendy's like, hey, go check this out. Go read this. And then I read it. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. It explained it 100%. I'll yep. tell you what. See, yep. there's that little eye button right there. Oh, there it is. There it is right up there. There's that eye so, button. It'll explain everything yeah. for you. Yeah, that was definitely helpful. But uh, it was a little disappointing because it was so easy. Um, it was. It did feel like we were, you know, it wasn't a full alliance, right, that we were doing yeah. because we don't have that many envoys. We were still able to clear each day. Uh, I believe they said during the call that the player's voice, they were doing their own testing. They did they couldn't get through, but the envoys did. Oh, wow. So that was kind of, wow. that was kind of funny. Go envoys. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you don't need a full alliance. And I can see why they tested or they wanted us to test at the level 75 mark just to see how new alliances are going to go absolutely but, um if you're in an uh, if you're in an alliance that uh you're all level 100 then you know uh, difficulty four like we ran in the second one is still going to be fairly easy for you um now they did so in the call we, we talked about a lot of things i think they are going to go with um difficulty four like you can start off right away at difficulty four mm -hmm. and then unlock difficulty five so you don't have to go six weeks of unlocking each difficulty because that was a big um problem we saw with with if they were going to keep it that way that people would just not care and would just be really pissed off that it's just yeah, Put that they auto and go, right? that they waited all this time just to have to yeah. be gated behind just doing mindless, mindless, mindless. Right. That would bore Krakens to to no end, yeah. right? Definitely, yeah. And even, I mean, we'll see how how difficulty five goes, but difficulty five might be boring for them too. So yeah, like you guys were saying, I hope they um, do make it so difficult that you're gonna it's gonna take like a level cap or a gear yeah. tier increase, something to get through it. So, so then after the call, you know, we talked about, we well, guys talked about the timer. I thought that was a really good idea. Oh yeah. I can't believe they haven't done that in other modes. Oh, they need to already. do it. They need to do it in every game mode, even Alliance like a, War. You definitely get like that a reverse, feedback. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a reverse chess timer, I believe, right? Yeah. So you like timer stops when it's your turn. You get to actually take. I don't know. They should be. I think there should be a limit, like how long you should take to pick your move. But you do get plenty of time to like think about. Okay, do I want to use this? Do I want to use a special? Do I want to use the, the ult? Whatever. So, um, so yeah, that was great that they did that. That was on during the first test, but during the second test, reducing some of the missions and um, it was kind of bugged a little bit. So I didn't get to do it too much. But um, I really wish we would have gotten to null on yeah. the second test because that. That is without a doubt the funnest thing, and I hope they. I had told them during the call that I hope they reduce the number of zones. They said they can, but I don't think they're going to until we start until they start hearing more feedback about that. Because six zones, doing the same thing every day, just autoing through, just isn't fun. I, I think four zones and then like a fifth zone of null or something or three zones yeah uh, so it's gonna be six be days better, six days of sieges yeah. and on the fifth day i believe there's a there's a an elite mission with like two mephistos in it and a whole bunch of annihilators and there's also a tag in there that has the everything tag which means that every single game mode is on so you're definitely going to want to participate in battle world that was something that definitely caught us off guard uh how was how was the continuation of your second experience up dog um it was like i said it was buggy i didn't get to do it very much it was it was it was about the same i think because we had our live game rosters in that time i was still just autoing and yeah, and then it then it bugged out, so we didn't get very far. So that's basically my experience. Yeah, I definitely want to see. I definitely want to see some changes happen from the second playtest experience, even from the third playtest experience that we're going to be doing. I'm telling you guys, 
you guys want to battle that guy up there and while you battle no like when you load in like jose was saying in the strike spot you don't have to wait to battle the boss at the same time like you don't have to wait for somebody to go in and battle him you get to go in all 24 alliance mates can go in and destroy this guy and after he's destroyed he just regains his health back up and you can destroy him again so you definitely want to plan with your alliance to not necessarily use all of your attacks at once and there are no restrictions on who you can use in the final null battle in the final null battle i used a team like uh let's see i used mephisto annihilators then i used sus uh secret defenders and then i used mercs for money tangled apoc and is still got destroyed on difficulty yeah. one at level 75 up dog what, what 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 teams did you use during uh the final null battle i actually want to know this i think i did use uh annihilators mephisto as well mm -hmm. and they didn't seem to last as long uh, i'm trying to think what else i like spider society a lot so i think i ran <laughs> them with like scroll or something um and they they you know they got a lot of sustain so they lasted quite a while uh, but yeah i I don't know if the dev is more concerned about just getting ultimately destroyed by Null with that difficulty five level. Oh or yeah. What, what, his, what his deal is? Why he <laughs> thinks difficulty five is going to be so hard? Because looking at the stats on difficulty five doesn't look like it's too much. So, but yeah, that Null bottle, or that no, that Null bottle, the Null battle is definitely. Um, it's going to take a whole alliance, all, all 24 people and all three attacks. So. Absolutely. This year, so we, we ended up seeing, we ended up seeing a, a darkness effect, right? And we also saw an, a rage effect and we saw Noel summoning a whole bunch of symbiotes as well. His, yeah. that blue bar you see up there is his turn meter. The green bar is his health. And all of those different abilities are his basic, special, ultimate, and passive. When you click on them, it gives you a, a little bit of uh, intro and everything. And the little bar graph you see up there shows the different enemies that are going to be on the node and all of the modifiers that are going to be on there. Desir, what did you take to the uh, to the final Null battle? I don't remember the exact. I know I had one team where I did a pretty good amount of damage that I thought I did. Um, you, dude, you, you, you did a lot of damage. Awful. I saw it show up. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the APOC was MVP of one team because the Falcon Punch, even though it doesn't do that max, like, 60% yeah. health gone, um, it's the kids they put, like, a limiter on it, but that still wrecked them pretty good. Um... I think I did, I know I did Annihilators on one of them. I, one of the other ones that did like a little weird, unique team. I need to look to see what it was I did, but that one actually did fairly well. And I think that's when I threw APOC with it. Mm -hmm. um, another one, I just kind of got trounced because <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't really know what I was doing, but you get three attacks per node and also three attacks on the boss node. Um, the Null fight, we didn't get to like, see the environment that they advertised we just yeah like, shot what was that on, like some rooftop or something which was <laughs> weird. it's like i'm fighting Noel on a building yeah um, i don't remember that. so like I watching I the swear. i swear it was in the environment okay. no we battled Noel in the city like when you initially yeah, yeah. start the game we were just battling him in the city and that was that was one of the things that was like that was the key point we're supposed to be battling him at his throne <laughs> yeah and so like watching the the strike spot video that pathfinder and strike fox did and actually like hearing the music that we're going to be experiencing and that that's actually really cool they got gore to like do a song for the game for yeah. this. so i'm really looking forward to that oh yeah um as far as the the waves go like leading up to the null fight so we have those five zones then the sixth zone is null uh, each of the nodes, you basically get three attempts into that, and it's going to take your high. So if you don't clear it, just at least try to get, I think, to wave four 
and that's going to kind of be your limit and then anything beyond that's going to be like bonus points yeah for those that's kind of curious but um that was something that kind of threw me off it's like okay well if i can back out and have that attack not count like go back in yeah then i can just keep trying until i clear it until you actually save that yeah, yeah 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 um, so I thought that was like a unique thing. Um, so if you have like, say, your Secret Defenders team and you do really bad at the opening, it's like, okay, I'm gonna back out, try again. You can do that as many times as you want until you actually decide, I wanna save this hit. Yeah. Um, and then you can try some other teams to see if you can like beat that wave portion. Um, that was kind of important on the, the infamous Morbius fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, dang um, Morbius, man. Yeah, but the Null fight, just having him keep summoning those endless swarms of symbiotes was so cool. And uh, as the rage builds up, it's like, okay, this isn't too bad. No. Then it's like, <laughs> phase two, the fight has started now. Then it's yeah, more rage. It just keeps three, progressively like getting more difficult and more difficult. The animations are something you guys are definitely going to want to see. When I saw Null Ultimate, oh my goodness, I was in shock and awe. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. And I like the thematic, like, throughout the different zones, you had, like, uh, a node of symbiotes or something. Like, they were all spawning in at the same time. Yeah, yeah, had yeah. A, had an anti-venom or whatever in there to revive them if need be. So, yeah, I liked the, the they kept to the theme, which was good. Yeah, I definitely yeah. liked the, I definitely liked the thematics of it all. It's definitely it's definitely going to be one for the books when we finally get to get into a final version of this. Our third play test is going to be happening very soon. So hopefully we can share some more information with you guys. But moving forward, I believe we're going to be covering some sections. I believe we're going to be covering some of the uh, full missions that were removed or an additional uh, mission that was removed for a Herald mission, I believe. Uh, Mr. Desir is going to be covering that and the Herald missions moving into um, turning into a, a mini boss version of sorts because when we brought up that uh, when we brought up that Morbius that is what sparked the mini boss of it all right and of course he's going to be going over the Herald missions and all of the uh, all of the simple but fun mechanics that players can engage with and um it's gonna it's gonna be really nice updog is actually gonna be covering some more stuff that we can talk about uh when we continue the continuation of this video so let's move on to the next topics of battle world all right so the first uh in-depth topic we're going to cover is going to be um some of the things that i noticed as an alliance leader and we'll talk about that a little bit more and then i'll talk about a few of the improvements that they made between the call that we had and then the second uh, battle test that we had we'll get uh, these guys um, opinions on that kind of stuff and yeah so we'll go from there and then you guys can go check out these guys videos on some of the other topics they were going to be talking about so um i guess first of all the some of the improvements we kind of touched on a little bit already but um i really loved how they changed the timer so if you're selecting your ability then the timer just stops uh, we asked to see if we could get that in other modes but they were kind of hesitant because they said that um, it's already balanced around having a timer so what do you guys think about that answer that they gave? Uh, my my answer would be i don't think they remember the invaders and raids <laughs> that would be amazing for raids <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and Bendy, I know you weren't on the call, but what do you what do you make of that answer that they gave? Is it just an excuse, just to cop out, just so they don't have to do more work or what? Yeah, I would really like to see that timer in many more game modes than just one. I, if they were able to shell it out and really shove it down into Battle World and really add that tender love and care, you guys should definitely add some more tender love and care to Marvel Strike Force because there are a lot of players that love playing this game 
And the timer thing has been an issue for what, five years we've been playing this game yeah. of animations yep. just going crazy. Like they learned with Bucky Barnes and War. Yeah, you guys learned quick. And then guess how fast that got fixed, right? Yeah, it's it's crazy how <laughs> how cause and effect plays a plays a role in Marvel Strike Force. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's kind of what I said. Was like we've only been wanting a change to the timers for six years now, and uh, they they also add they have six minutes in Battle World now instead of just the normal five that we're used to. So it's like, okay, guys, we know you can do this, so let's kind of roll this out everywhere else. But they're a little hesitant to do that right now but um they did also reduce the difficulties of the mini boss that they had in the first play test and they changed it over to the herald um mission and so desir is going to talk a little bit more about that but um it's i'm glad that they reduced the difficulty of that because um like i think desir said earlier in the video the Morbius had like six safeguards, oh, six man. immunity or something, and he had like, I don't know, it felt like a billion health. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, he was just insane to get through. So I'm glad they they made it less difficult, but it's still, you're still going to need some skill. So what, I didn't get to do much uh, Herald mm -hmm. testing. Is that is that how you guys felt? or? So for the Morbius, um, initially you would sit there for about two minutes on auto trying to get through the Morbius because of all the buffs he had and you couldn't really do anything to him. Yeah. I believe they said initially they were going to do like 10 minute waves. That's how they kind of adjusted that to where it would take that long to take him out. Then they dropped it down to five minutes and that's where the issues were coming in that we noticed. So we were glad to have uh, play tested that to kind of get that feedback. Then they definitely adjusted him again with a six minute timer. So I believe he's still there, but he's not going to be as much of a pain just because you don't have to wait the two minutes to finally get through his buffs where you <laughs> could finally start doing damage to him and kill him. Right, right. What about you, Bendy? What was your experience between the, the initial and then the the change? the initial testing when we were battling those missions like this this god awful morbius we keep talking about let me tell you oh my god if we could show you guys what we faced it is absolute nonsense like we were saying earlier in the video the they had the morbius spawn but the timer was still going down and you wouldn't even be able to get through him like you would reach the final wave but then you would be there with like a minute and five seconds, yeah. 40 seconds left. It just felt really bad. One thing that Updog pointed out to me is that these Herald missions are not going to have timers, at least in the play test that we were doing. Updog, do you want to talk more, a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think that's good to, mm -hmm. you know, a good thing that they did that. I hope they keep it and uh yeah we'll see and like the the null battle right doesn't have a timer either yeah which right. which makes even more sense for him because he's just got this crazy health pool yeah like, you barrier, definitely your crazy barrier all the time so. <laughs> <laughs> well it feels good on those type of boss fights and like the the herald bosses where they don't have a timer because it feels more like a puzzle it's like okay yes i have all the time i'm going to try to do target so and so I want to use the special here now what's the effect of that now let me switch over to this other person so you can really time how you're going to control and do your damage to them so that's that's something i really loved about having no timer on those types whereas yeah. the other ones is more just like a the ray node to where it's let's try to get through it and beat the timer type of thing so it's an interesting mix now yeah and on the yeah. call it's funny you bring up the puzzle aspect of it on the call they were really adamant about a lot of these missions not being a puzzle they don't want it to be a puzzle they just want you to get through it and move on with your day they don't want you to sp spend a crazy amount of screen time because they do they are sensitive to all the other screen time that everybody's putting into the game so I, it was nice to hear that but i do like the puzzles personally myself <laughs> so i think hopefully this is going to be a good balance for things Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely for sure. And and that's why we like made all these uh 
uh, feedback where it's like, well, let's try to remove some of the nodes, which you're going to get into. Let's add these things in because we want this to be a successful game mode. Yeah. 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 So they did remove, there was, I don't know. Let's see. I'm kind of looking at my screen here. There was like five or six missions per zone or something like that. So they removed one of them um, per zone. So that's cutting down on the screen time. Um, I really like the, they have like a, every time you complete a zone, there's like a zone recap screen. Yeah. So as an Alliance leader, that's great to see uh, that recap. And then you also have, like you have in Rage, you have the leaderboard within your Alliance of uh, participation. So that's always good to keep track of like, hey, this one Alliance member, he didn't do anything that day, but mm. luckily we don't need everybody to finish a zone. But it's always nice to keep track of your members as a leader, seeing who's who's participating and who's not. So that I love that part of it that they already had that baked in. We didn't have to ask for that kind of thing. So that was great initiative on their part. Um, let's see here. Oh, so, well, <clears throat> let's see. So then the other thing that I think might help, and I want to get your guys' opinion on, but, um, like, so when you go into uh, one of the missions and let's say you don't clear it all the way, mm -hmm. I think it'd be helpful if, let's say, either you die or you quit out. Either way, you lose an attack because you get three attacks per note. So I think it should be more like a dark dimension type attack where you are you can load back in on that second attack, but you're you start off on that wave that you were on. What are you guys? What are your guys' thoughts on that? Um, as far as that goes, um, I think it would be nice because then you can if you need to like sack the opening because say they want you to use Pegasus, which is gonna throw Pegasus under the bus. Uh, right. We can go in with somebody like the Web Warriors, basically burn all the opening abilities, then we can go in with the Pegasus and do the job that they want us to do. So I think that would be a pretty good uh, compromise, I guess, as opposed to saying, well, my Pegasus can only get to wave four out of six. That right. way you don't have to like fully invest in them because mm -hmm. you can do those type of burn attacks and then throw somebody else in for the cleanup for that final hit. I think mm -hmm. that would be a pretty good compromise. Mm -hmm. yep. What about you, Bendy? So with the initial testing that we did, of course, something that wasn't mentioned in these videos is that you guys are going to be getting VP per wave. Now, if you guys say you guys are level 75 Alliance, you know, you're just just gritting at the teeth to get in there and you guys can really only clear four waves or so. If you guys clear those four waves, it's still gonna give you VP, just not the full VP that it would be awarding if you were completing the full node. Now, if you accept that VP and you can only get there and you let the timer run out or you die, that is your team and you do not get to attack with that team again. But if you back out, I do believe that either it eats an attack or it doesn't. There's still a little bit of testing going on with that. We have to wait to see what the final version says. But if you were to back out, I believe it eats an attack or doesn't eat an attack. That's still subject to change. But you get to keep your team and go back in because we were battling with the timers so much. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily seem like the timers are going to be much of an issue because they're going to be stopping when it's our turn. Now, like Updog was saying, maybe there should be a, um, a cool down limit on that because you can't just sit there and wait, right? Like you, it's, it's, you, you definitely don't want to sit there and wait. And as he was speaking in the Herald missions where there's no timer, you guys can actually enjoy animations now and it not feel bad. Yeah. It yeah. seems like uh, all of the Herald missions are going to be like symbiote based. It seems like they're going to be throwing in like costumes and stuff. Um, what was uh, what was your initial experience with that up dog? What was the what was the experience what you saw with the costumes and everything? I think, yeah, I, well, I think that the, the Herald missions, they definitely should, like the, the main mini boss of that should have 
uh, like a, a different costume or different I don't know chroma key or something. Yeah, like a variant, yeah. sort of like how Orange Hulk sometimes was they, in this in other yeah. games. Yeah. <laughs> or sometimes they do that glowing like. Yeah, like the the corrupted the like the, yeah. I think your costume just kind of pops a little bit better. So not only would that give the art team a little bit more uh, flexibility in like creating more costumes, because personally I like costumes a lot in the game. So that would be great to like be able to make more costumes, have more costumes available, uh, but also just to distinguish, you know, who the who we're actually like really needing to take down. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the uh, changes or one of the things that like, actually we're all three of us here. We're talking about <laughs> a little bit off camera. So we'll, I definitely want to bring that up to them. But the other last thing uh, that that we kind of talked about as the, as, as an envoy group was uh, we and I personally don't think that the, the purple ISO probably isn't quite enough of a reward for to get people interested, especially people like me and Desir who have uh, Odin already and oh, we're just yeah. kind of sitting and waiting and just building up our purple ISO so they need to give us something else like maybe some more uh, dark promotions or dark diamonds or something something a little bit more to uh, get us keep us interested and keep us grinding towards things what do you, is there any other rewards that you guys can think of that would would do that for you keep you interested uh, definitely add in like DPCs as a bare minimum just because yeah. the people that don't buy like the battle passes I know they really struggle to try to keep up with their roster to get those characters up to like 7 red um, so add in DPCs as a minimum and then from there you can add on like maybe a few of the silver diamonds or dark diamonds something to really uh, enjoy because Right. Like you mentioned, uh, we already finished our Odin, our DD8 run twice, so I have a pretty good stockpile. I'm still being cautious as far as like burning my resources. Um, so I have like over two million of the purple ISO, which I know people's like, god. like your reaction there. Oh I my have god, about, I have about 80 orbs I can open up, so <laughs> I'm yeah. I just hoard it, I don't need to take those characters up to the purple. Yeah, um, right. And I know those Krakens where they spend the money and everything, they don't need the purple ISO as well. So like their bing reward's gonna be unlocked null once that's done, now what? So they, they definitely need to add more rewards to this. Yep. Absolutely agree. So we'll take it into Desir's uh, video. Go make sure, check out his channel and then Bendable will finish us off with his video. Go make sure you check out his channel. I'll put all those links down in the description and appreciate you guys for joining me. All right, so like I said, make sure you go check out Bendable and Desir on their channels. They talk about other topics more in depth. So check them out in the links below. And until next time, make sure you spend those resources wisely. We will see you around.